Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be demonstrating the various ways in which we can use the Extrude tool in Blender. The Extrude tool can be located primarily within the tool shelf while in edit mode. So let's select our cube object and then press the tab key to go into edit mode and we're going to want to select the face select mode. You can extrude any of the three types of mesh geometry but extrusion is primarily done using face select in most cases. Now if we take a look at the tool shelf, we can see we have the option for the extrude region tool. I'm just going to left click to deselect everything first and then I'm going to left click on extrude region so that I can use this tool. Now I'm going to select one face and we get a gizmo pop up that will allow us to extrude. So we've got this circular cross here and we're going to click and drag and that's going to create new geometry in the form of an extrusion. So this allows us to select any of the faces on our model and then easily extrude them out. But there are different ways in which we can use the extrude tool. So I'm just going to hit Ctrl and C a few times to reset. If we open up this menu, which we can do so by holding down the left mouse button, we see that we have quite a few other options. So let's take a look at some of these. We're going to start with Extrude Manifold. Now in order to display this correctly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into Select Mode, select my entire model, I'm going to right click to bring up my face context menu and then I'm going to subdivide. We can open up the operator panel and just increase the number of cuts slightly. So here I've got a lot more geometry to work with and I'm going to go back to my extrude region tool. Now with the extrude region tool it's easy enough to extrude out but if we extrude in we're going to create some overlapping geometry which you can see right here. So this is just a simple flat face here that shouldn't exist and if we go into face select we can see that we have this face selected but then if we come over here the entirety of the face appears to be selected but what's actually happening is we have two faces that are overlapping each other. So a good way to avoid doing this is going to be to use the extrude manifold option. Let's go back to the extrude region menu and select extrude manifold. Now we're going to click and drag and if I drag out it looks the same but you'll notice that we're not creating a new edge on top, we're expanding that one face. And if I was to extrude inwards I can push my geometry in but now we have no overlapping geometry on top. So with the extrude manifold option, we can more easily extrude inwards for our model than we could with the extrude region tool. Let's take a look at another one of our extrude methods. So up next we have extrude along normals. So if I go back to my extrude region tool, I can select an entire loop by holding down Alt and left clicking. Now I want to extrude all of these faces that go around my model. I can click and drag, but then you can see it only seems to extrude out on the Z axis, which is basically the midpoint for all of these faces as their normals are facing different directions. So we just end up with useless geometry. I'm going to hold down control and press C to undo that operation. Next I'm going to open up extrude along normals and then I'm going to click and drag. And what this does is it will extrude the geometry of each individual face out along its normal direction. This is what gives us an effect where it almost begins to curve because the faces themselves are still attached to each other so they're being influenced 
by the face normals as well as the edge normals that they are connected to. Up next, we also have extrude individual. Now let's see if this has any difference to extrude along normals. We're going to select it, click and drag. And this time the corners are disconnected. So we're actually extruding all of these selected faces individually. So they are not actually connected to each other when being extruded out. Again, we can do the same here perhaps. So we have two faces in different directions, but if we click and drag, the face is detached and new geometry is added to connect them. We also have extrude to cursor. So we have one more option here within the tool shelf. I'm just going to go back as far as I can till we have our basic shape. The extrude to cursor option is best suited from a 2D orthographic view. I'm going to press 1 on my number pad to go into front orthographic view. But actually, I should select the geometry that I want to manipulate first and then press 1. I'm going to zoom out a bit and then I'm going to enable extrude to cursor. This tool works a little bit differently. What I have to do is I have to locate where I want to extrude to, and then I have to left click. This will snap an extrusion to that point. Now, depending on where the cursor is, will also transform the rotation of our extrusion. So if I come over to about here and press the left mouse button, you can see that the object has to rotate just so we can position the extrusion at this point. But it does allow us to very easily and very quickly begin creating a basic shape for our model. Now this is a horrible looking arc, but you can probably tell that it's an arc nonetheless. And there's a lot more that we can do to position the vertices that we generate. But with the extruder cursor tool, we have the ability to create our geometry far more quickly. The tool shelf isn't the only location though where we can find our extrude tool. So once again, I'm just going to revert back to the original cube. If we take a look in the face menu in the header bar for the 3D viewport, you can find the various options for extruding. Although at this point we can only find three of them, so two of them seem to be unique to our tool shelf. What we can also do though is access certain extrusion methods using the hotkey. So here we have the hotkey for E to extrude our face. I'm going to go to my select box option so that I can select my geometry. And then I'm going to press the E key to enable extrusion. This will extrude out along the local C axis or the normal C axis I should say of the selected face. So whichever way that face is pointing, which is its normal, we're going to be extruding along that normal when using the E key to create new geometry. One last option that may be hidden to some is the ability to perform repeat extrusions to the same level. I'm going to show you what I mean by this by just reverting my cube one more time. Then I'm going to go to a special extrusion menu which we can access by holding down ALT and pressing E. This brings up the extrude menu which has many of the options we have seen so far, including the ability to extrude manifold. But we also have a couple more options here, including spin and extrude repeat. So if we were to use extrude repeat now, there doesn't seem to be much of a use case for this kind of extrusion. So what we're going to do instead is just go back to where we started, hit E to extrude, and we'll extrude by holding down the control key so that we extrude up one meter. And then we're going to open up 
the same extrude menu and extrude repeat. Then we're going to reduce the offset values here in the operator panel to zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to level things out. So we've extruded 10 times here, but they've all been extruded along the same location because we've got no offset value. If I begin to increase the Z value here for my offset, you can see the geometry that's been formed. So I can set this up to say one meter, and now each extrusion will have been pushed up on the Z axis by a value of one meter. We can manipulate the number of steps, which is equivalent to the number of times that we extrude. Finally, we have the scale offset option. If we manipulate the scale offset, this represents the scale of our extrusion compared to the offset value. So by setting this to a value of two, for example, we have extruded the first time here, but now each of these is twice as large as that original extrusion. So this is how we can use the extrude repeat tool. Thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in learning more about Blender, then check out the link in the description below. This will take you to the Blender Bootcamp, which is our own library filled with Blender learning resources such as classes, full courses, further tutorials, workshops, and more. Check out the link in the video description and gain access to all of these resources for free for a 30-day trial period.